and welcome to the National Eagle Center, A Storied Life of a Feather. My name is Tiffany Plone. I am the Avian Care Manager for the National Eagle Center. And today, we're going to be talking a bit about feathers. So most of us here in the United States have heard something along the lines of it is illegal to have a bald eagle feather in your possession. But have you ever thought of why? or how that came to be, or is it true, or anything like that. Well, that's what we're gonna talk about today. But to start, we of course have to talk about feathers and kind of where they come from. So let's start at the beginning. So first of all, a bald eagle like this one back here, it doesn't quite look like a bald eagle yet. This is a four-year-old, he's maturing, give him some slack. They don't get that white head and tail until they are about five to six years old on average. So this is a four-year-old bald eagle. And the reason why we want to talk about this one is because all of these birds have 7,000 feathers. No joke, someone at one point in time sat down and counted every single one of them. I feel very bad for that intern. But we now know today that they have just over 7,000 feathers on each and every one of these birds. And so for instance, on this individual, who again is supposed to be about four years old, uh, what's really unique about this is that each feather serves a particular purpose. So we have our primaries out here, we have our secondaries here, and we have our tail feathers here, and it's not so interesting on this photo. So I'm gonna show you the real thing. So here is a primary feather. Specifically, this is Columbia's primary feather, one of our large, actually I should say, our largest individual bald eagle here at the National Eagle Center. These primary feathers are extremely important because those are the feathers coming off of this individual here. And these are really what help give them lift. That's why they are not center. And so if I flip it over on this way, you can see the shaft running not up the middle of the feather. So you can see there's a short side and a very long side. And the reason for that, and I know that this is a left-sided feather, meaning that it came off of the left wing, is because this short end is to catch air to push that individual up off the ground for when they fly. Very important feathers. Now, these secondary feathers look more like this. And you can see that this feather is a little bit more centered. So again, it still has that short side, this one also coming from the left wing, still has that short side to help continue that lift, but it's a little bit more center to help carry that bird. And then we're gonna get to a tail feather. This particular one also came from a four-year-old bald eagle. This one came from our individual latch here at the center, which is why it's not fully white. And you can see that this shaft is down the middle of the feather. And that's because this feather is found in the center of the body. And so this feather really isn't made to create lift, but actually helps in direction and things like that. And so that's what this feather serves its purpose for. But I wanna show you my favorite feather. This feather, you can't super see on here. It actually is coming just off the wing here. And it's this one. This is what we call an alula. And this feather is very important because this is kind of like the steering wheel for the bird. And so I'm gonna take my handy dandy skeleton here. So from previous program, if you guys watched with Angel, you got to see our lovely uh, fake wrist here. And so again, this is an eagle wing. So I'm gonna turn it around here. So if this was my left wing, put out my left wing, these are my feathers, these are my primaries. This is my alula. And this is my wing folded, just like this. This is where my feathers are. This is my wrist, my elbow, and of course, my shoulder. And so this is where my feathers would be. And that Alula feather, where my thumb would be, is, flip this back around here, right here. And so there actually is a little bone that comes off as well to help guide those feathers. Believe it or not, with all 7,000 feathers on these individuals, they can control every single one of them. They can move them up and down and manipulate them to help get this bird where it needs to go. Now, something really neat is that many of you know, especially if you watch our programs by now, that these birds have to grow up incredibly fast and they're as big as they're ever going to be at only three months old. And in fact, they're a little bigger than they're ever going to be for the rest of their lives. And this photo shows that because these birds have what we call training wheel feathers. And you can see that this individual 
is losing them. So we have a few of those training wheel feathers that are just molting out that are longer than the rest of them. You can see them here as well. And what these training wheel feathers do is give them extra length. It's kind of like putting training wheels on a bike to help you learn how to ride a bike and give you that safety. Birds are built with them. So their first couple of years, they have these training wheel feathers to help carry them, learn how to fly, give them some extra lift. It, they also are made to be easily broken. So if they run into something, they can lose that tip without losing any of the strength. And so then they can keep the rest of the length to help them learn how to fly until the next year when they go through a molt. Now I keep using that word and that's because molting means that they drop their feathers. Not all at once. We don't have a bunch of bald birds in the spring, but in springtime, eagles along with other birds start to lose their feathers as they grow in new ones. That's how we have feathers like these. And so basically what happens is that every springtime uh, going into summer, right about now, um, our birds along with birds out in the wild are starting to drop their feathers as they're growing in brand new ones, just like this bird is doing here. He's dropping out these feathers as he's growing in new ones. It's really important that they drop, especially these really uh, important ones that take a lot of the beating. They're up front, these primary feathers. They see a lot of the action, so they, these feathers fall out. And it takes about three months for them to grow in a whole new one. Now, I mentioned that they're not all bald. They didn't lose all 7,000 feathers at once. They lose them one at a time. And something really cool that, again, this photo shows is that they are symmetrical. Meaning that when this bird loses these three feathers, it's going to be about the same time that it loses these three feathers. You can see that they match. And that's because when this bird starts to lose this one and this feather falls out, in about 24 hours, this one's going to fall out to keep that bird symmetrical as he flies. So he doesn't have a hard time controlling himself. How cool is nature? I find that incredible. In fact, moose and deer do the same thing with their antlers. They fall off at almost the same time. That's why you don't often see them walking around with only one antler, which is pretty darn cool. Now, what happens to all these feathers after they molt? So out in the wild, when they molt these feathers, they fall down, they fall into a nest, something like that, because again, it's springtime, they have babies that they're taking care of, they might molt these feathers in the nest, and a lot of people don't realize that most of them get eaten. <laughs> Apparently they're quite tasty. These feathers are made of a protein called keratin, which is very difficult to digest for a lot of animals, including eagles, but they are a really fun toy and they are a source of protein. So it's really common that they will destroy them and rip them up. If an eagle doesn't do that, other animals will use it. And so other animals like coyotes are really common for eating them and ingesting them. They can digest that protein, which is really good for them. Or you may have another bird that is using these feathers to help them with nesting. They can help by picking all this stuff up and help build their own nest for their own babies. So these feathers do serve a second life out in the wild, either as a really good source of protein or even as housing for other animals, which I think is pretty darn cool. Now, that being said, I obviously have just shown you a bunch of feathers that are right here in front of me. They aren't out in the wild. They aren't being eaten by a coyote and they aren't going to another bird's nest. Our birds molt feathers too. Now, while we have several permits to house our birds and take care of them and give them everything that they need, we actually do not have the right to hold onto these. All of these feathers will be sent to the National Eagle Repository out in Colorado. And that's so that other people, other institutions, can apply for permits to be able to use them for education. We can use them for little sections like this and then send them off. We do have some feathers on our permits uh, that we can use for education, but we literally have to have each and every one of them specifically written into our permit. We can't just say, we're gonna keep some feathers. We have to contact our federal permit holder and they actually have to write us an addendum into our permit to say, we have specifically this many secondary or primaries or tail feathers or whatever specifically it is so that we all know exactly what should be here while well, all the rest of this will go to that repository in Colorado. Once it reaches the repository, they all get sorted and separated and then it is their job to kind of go through and 
see who needs feathers. So again, other institutions and individuals can apply for permits to receive feathers, including Native Americans. There is a myth that Native Americans can pick up feathers out in the wild uh, because of their heritage. That's actually not true. And so they also need a permit. And the reason why these permits exist is for a really important purpose. So like at the beginning, I asked, you know, have you really ever thought of why there are these laws or why you've heard that it's illegal to have a feather? Well, the penalties that go with having a feather are pretty steep. So for an individual, you can get some jail time and upwards of a $100,000 fine, which is only for a first offense. It gets double for the second. And so it is pretty steep, but there's also a really good reason for it. We're actually gonna travel back in time here to the 1800s. And so back in the 1800s, feathers were kind of for everyone. And in fact, they were quite fashionable. And so everyone wanted feathers. They put them on their dresses. They made hats out of entire carcasses. Who didn't want a whole swan hat? I mean, it's just glorious. And so all these birds were kind of running into trouble because people thought that they were a fantastic fashion statement. Not only that, but also there were bounties for birds, including bald eagles and golden eagles. And so actually for beaks or feet or feathers, there were these bounties for them. And so people were getting paid to actually hunt and kill these birds, which did not help their situation. So unfortunately, not just the bald eagle, but a bunch of birds were headed toward the way of extinction. And so the government had to decide, do we just say you can't hurt these few birds and risk people going after the other species to indulge these kind of fetishes with dressing and hats and things like that? Or do we just say, you know what? You can't have any. You can't have any feathers from any bird, any native bird. That's right. It's not just the bald and golden eagle that are protected. Did you know that every single native bird to the United States, North America, are protected. That means that even the robin feather in your backyard, it is not okay to take. And that's because of the fact that so many of these birds were in quite a bit of danger back then. And so since then, several different laws have gone, gone into place since then. So we have the migratory bird law that protects any migra migratory bird or native bird to North America, which includes things like your robins in your backyard, your, your blue jays, things like that. It's not okay to have their feathers or harm them in any way. But then we also have the Bald and Golden Eagle Act. And that's really the one that's referenced for bald eagles and golden eagles today. Now, while we may look at these penalties and maybe even roll our eyes and say, oh my goodness, well, I never, you know, harmed a bird in my backyard. I found this feather. I found it on the ground. Why can't I have it? Well, the reason is because there's no way to prove that this feather was found or that you hurt a bird and took it from them. And so, these birds, even though we thankfully don't think that a bald eagle is a really fantastic dress to wear these days, they unfortunately still face a lot of trouble. Even though they were taken off the endangered species list in 2007, they are still protected. And even today, they still face danger. And so today, most common things are, for instance, car collisions. We have lead poisoning. We have power line injuries. But we still have poaching. And in fact, there is still a black market for eagle parts today. A really good example of this is that in 2011, there was Operation Rolling Thunder, which was an investigation into wildlife trafficking. Now, during this operation, they actually found that a single bald eagle feather, one of these guys, was being sold on the black market for $500, quite commonly. That made a very healthy black market, unfortunately. And so they decided that, of course, that had to stop. It was shut down and actually 12 individuals were convicted of wildlife trafficking through that program. Now, that's awesome. It's wonderful that that was found. It was wonderful that that stopped. But unfortunately, wildlife trafficking is still a really big problem in the US and across the world today. So, in the United States, we have the National Eagle and Wildlife Property Repository, which is also located in Colorado. They store wildlife trafficking evidence. They have over a million pieces of wildlife trafficking evidence. 
half of that is just for eagles. Half of it is evidence for wildlife trafficking cases related to eagles alone. That's how much of a problem this still is. So while it may get frustrating knowing that you have to do paperwork, you have to go through these things, you can't even find an eagle feather out in the wild and take it home to show your kids. What we do tell people is please admire these wonderful you know, gifts, these wonderful feathers, take photos of them, show them to your loved ones, but leave them be because they serve a wonderful purpose out in the wild for other animals and creatures, but something too is to make sure that these items don't accidentally end up in that market, whether we realize that we're helping it or not. Now, again, some of these you know, fines and things like that may be kind of frustrating, but I wanna share a quick story with you. It is nice to hear that they are uh, serving some really good purposes as well. And so something too is that with the Bald and Golden Eagle Act, it not only protects eagles and their feathers and things that are attached to them, but it also protects their home. And so it also means that you can't harass or you can't disturb any part or take any part from them that is related to them, including things like their eggs or their nest or their tree. And so one of these cases was that in Florida, a company actually was building houses and they came across a tree in their development that had an eagle's nest in it. Well, that was in the way of them building houses, so they chopped it down and they destroyed that eagle's nest. That company was fined over $350,000 for disturbing that eagle nest and actually destroying it. And on top of that, an individual within the company also was sentenced and fined an additional $5,000 for destroying that eagle's nest. And so hopefully with cases like that, people realize how important they are and how much we have to care about not just the individual, not just the feathers, but every piece that comes with them. And so when you see a feather out in your backyard, even if it's not an eagle feather, if it's any bird's feather, please admire it. Please you know, take a photo of it, educate someone you love about it, and then leave it be because you never know who else is going to find it just as magical as you did. I want to thank artist April Schumacher for designing this eagle for us. It has been a wonderful education tool and I hope you enjoyed it as well. Thank you so much.